Hey friends, welcome to our homestead. It is time to get serious about homesteading and it is past time to stop doing these two things. Let's talk about it. What you doing, dude? So these first two things I'm gonna talk about don't apply to my regular subscribers and commenters. Y'all got your head screwed on pretty straight here. But the first thing I'm talking about is joking around when it comes to homesteading and joking around in unbelief that, you know, things probably aren't gonna happen, that are too serious in our country and there's really no need to do it. I kinda like homesteading and I like, you know, baking my own bread and stuff, but I really don't wanna move out in the country and do work. That's ridiculous. The second thing is somewhat related, and that is having no positive will to move in a positive direction toward your homesteading goals. And I read comments all the time about that as well, and that, nah, yeah, we'll get to it when we get to it. There's no sense of urgency. And you have to be a student of geopolitics and economics and all that stuff. And I know that's so boring, but economics is so important. You need to take a look at that. And if you really want to do this lifestyle, if you want to live like this for, you know, just the piece of it or the security of it, whatever it is in your mind, just do it. Don't have a lazy spirit, do it. Set your goals and move towards them in a good, quick manner. <laughs> and that time frame is getting shorter as we speak. Now, I know I said paying attention to this one thing is super boring, and it can be, but paying attention to economics is extremely important. That's because if you don't have money, you can easily be manipulated and pressured into doing whatever it is somebody else wants you to do. And that's usually at the behest of powerful political figures. And that's been the same throughout time. That's part of the reason why our country was so free for so long, and I'm gonna talk about why it isn't anymore. We were so free for so long as we had a giant middle class that had a lot of savings, a lot of purchasing power, and we could suppress, not totally put away, but suppress uh, political pressure to do things that we're not comfortable with doing. So when you're looking at those economic numbers, you're looking at inflation or CPI, and that consumer price index, which is a measure of inflation, has been changed. It's been manipulated and changed. The calculation over the last 40 or 50 years to make it seem like you're still paying decent amount of money for some food or something like that. But I think a lot of you are realizing lately that that's not true because no matter how much they manipulate those numbers, they feed the public. And this is the government I'm talking about. No matter how much they manipulate those numbers, it still is translating into much higher prices at the grocery store. And if you look at the wage increase over the last 30 years versus the housing price over the last 30 years. There's a massive, massive discrepancy. They used to track pretty closely, but there's a huge divergence from those two lines, those two numbers, and it's going to get worse. I know a lot of you are feeling the pain at the pump, the pain at the grocery store, and the pain in the housing market, and the pain in the auto market if you need a new car. It's really difficult to find a new car right now for a decent price. And I'm not gonna dive too deeply into numbers. I'm just going over concepts here. If you wanna dive into numbers and things like that, go check out the Economic Ninja and tell him in the comments section that I sent you over there. He's a great channel and he's giving a lot of amazing information. And also Car Edge. It's a former car dealer and his son who talk about the car prices and the, the repo market and the used car market and current markets and what's going on with all that. It's a huge amount of information. I don't know either of them personally, but if you go over there, tell them I sent you. Speaking of auto loans, the number of auto loan defaults right now is almost as high as 2008, and they're projected to go way higher. The amount of repossessed vehicles out there, I don't know if you guys know anybody who's gotten their car, just that 
just disappeared in the middle of the night because the repo guy came with the tow truck to grab it because they couldn't pay the payments. But friends, big banks who have made auto loans are now dumping those auto loan backed securities on the market. They're trying to sell them off because they understand that the consumer is probably going to default as a whole on most of those loans. So they want to get rid of them and they're getting rid of them in droves right now. Another point in the economy, and this is why economics are so important, there's a one and a half times more banks that have failed in the last 15 months than there was during the entire 2008 crash in the few years after that. That is insane and it's projected to go way higher because officially we're not in a recession, but we have been for a couple of years. You gotta understand, recessions start years before they actually, you know, burst. And 2008 started back in late 2005 to 2006. Friends, right now, everyone is over leveraged. What does that mean? It means you have too much debt. Banks, companies, large and small companies, just regular everyday citizens, everybody is way over leveraged and they are borrowing that money from somewhere. And that just isn't in this country, which is one of the worst for being over leveraged. That's all around the world, but they don't have any cash anymore. Companies don't have cash. Let me talk about that for a second. Since these companies don't have cash, they are also slaves to their lenders. Those lenders are directing them. Have you noticed companies going woke like crazy lately? Old brands, brands you wouldn't think would go woke. Uh, I hate that word, but it's the, everybody knows it and it's the only way to describe it, okay? Companies like Tractor Supply and uh, Levi's Jeans and Carhartt and all of these companies, they are slaves to their lenders. They are doing things that are hurting their business. You know, look at Bud Light. You know, I'm not, I'm not a drinker, but look at what has happened to Bud Light. They have lost a massive amount of market share because of what they did, and it doesn't bother them. They don't care because their huge lender is directing them to do it through their ESG programs, environmental, social, and G, governmental. So understand Maybe some of these companies or even their employees don't want to do these things. They think it's ridiculous. They're gonna hurt their company, their brand, but they have to do it. So if those companies are being forced, forced to do those things, what happens when you can't pay back the things that you've borrowed? Friends, Proverbs 27, the rich ruleth over the poor and the borrower is slave to the lender. Time honored, biblical, God-given principle. And all of us have broken it. You know, I was in debt myself for a number of years. I told you that in previous videos. Student loans, credit cards, just auto loans like crazy, all of this stuff. God has given me foresight to get rid of those things and get rid of those debts in a very hasty manner. So depriving myself of other things while I get rid of those debts, it was paramount that I do that because God's counsel is pure and true. So I just want to leave that with you. And here's a crazy thing, friends. Student loan debt is not bankruptable. Bankruptcy, you cannot put yourself through a bankruptcy for a student loan. You have to pay it back. And what are they going to do? I've I heard in the past, it was probably five years ago now, that there were some, some people who were arrested for not paying their student loans. If you know those stories that I'm talking about, I can't remember where they came from. Maybe like Ohio is ringing a bell here. I can't remember the name of the university. Anyway, put them in the comment section below if you remember that happening. Well, I think that's going to happen more as soon as this um, moratorium on student loan payments gets lifted. I think, is it next month or is it October? Somewhere around there. It's going to be bad because people, you know, wages haven't increased. There's been a lot of layoffs. If you haven't paid attention to the number of layoffs in the tech sector in the last six months, months, it's a lot. So people are going to lose their houses because they can't pay their mortgages. They refied at a higher price or their new, you know, mortgage uh, uh, interest rate is really high. 
auto loans are off the charts insane. And that is one of the biggest things that is getting people really underwater. So the guy over at Car Edge, I don't know his name, Ray, I think he mentioned that it used to be a kind of a standard thing that people would calculate that no more than 20%, I think it was, of their uh, net uh, take home pay would be for an auto loan. I recommend way less than that, but who am I, right? Your car loses 20% of its value as soon as you drive it off the lot. And now you cannot find a pickup truck for less than 60 grand. If you find one for 40, there's crazy dealer markups. There's all this kind of insane add-ons to it that, you know, regular working guys, the, the farmers out here where I live, can't buy a new work truck that doesn't have a whole bunch of garbage on it that they don't need and they can't buy it for under 50 grand. That's a lot for some of these farmers and I know some of them and they cannot afford that. Did you know right now the average monthly auto loan payment per month is $930. That's absolutely off the charts insane. Not only is that being pushed up by interest rates, but that's being pushed up by ridiculous vehicle prices that these dealers, and a lot of them are in extreme trouble because they cannot sell vehicles right now because they're priced too high, because they're underwater on them. They got into them for way too much and they're not willing to reduce the price because they're not willing to take the loss. Well, they're going to have to do that in a not too distant future. So hold on if you need a new car. Friends, get out of debt now. Put your big city house on the market while somebody is still going to buy it and buy a modest home on some property in the country. And do it right now. Do not drag your feet. Why? Because if you look at all the other economic indicators, and I'm not being an alarmist here, I'm just looking at the data. All the other economic indicators show that this economy is about to go off of a cliff. You know, they can artificially keep it up for only so long. And the Fed, is completely out of ammunition when it comes to propping up things. You can see that by the rise in inflation. A rise in inflation, I think, unofficial numbers, or the actual numbers, I should say, are, it's over 23% in the last three years. And shrinkflation is upon us too. The same jar of olives that I buy at Walmart three years ago was 10 ounces, and it was about 350. That same jar of olives now is 370, but it's only seven ounces. They shrunk the packaging. It's, the it's actually a little bit more in price. That's just one tiny little example of the price inflation that's going on in the grocery store. Please stop getting sucked back into the debt cycle. Please just don't do it. You will be a slave. You will be able to be manipulated into doing whatever it is that they want you to do. And yeah, when I say they, you know who I mean. Christian friends, I'm talking directly to you now. Get serious. All right, get serious about studying the Word of God because there are so many false prophets out there. There are so many false Christs. There are a lot of things that are going to happen that if you are not rooted in that Word, every word of it, Old and New Testament, then you will be deceived. And Christian friends, remember, every penny that you have is a gift from God. Every penny of that is His. He gifted it upon you to glorify Him. Do that in everything that you do. And that includes character self-development. So if you're not reflecting or looking like Christ now, you need to be. And if that means leaving behind the sinful city and all the garbage that's in there for a quiet country homestead where you're working with your hands, and you don't have your fancy job anymore, and you don't have your three-car garage, and you don't have your Lexus or Mercedes and your 3,500 square foot home. It doesn't matter. Get rid of it. You can't take it with you. Please. Be modest. Go out. Get something small. God will provide for you. Use the rest for His work. And part of that, remember, is working on and developing your own character. Look at Moses. He was trained in Egypt. He was brought up in Egypt in the palace. He was a general. He was rich. He was all of these things. Thankfully, he still knew God because of what his mother was teaching him. But then it took 40 years of being humbled and taking care of sheep out in the desert 
for him to be able to get that out of him and change his character into the character that God could use to then lead his people out of Egypt. And friends, look, can you do those things from inside the city? Uh, I would say no, but maybe a tiny, tiny percentage of people could do that. But we're called to be out in the countryside where we can raise provisions for our families. And then we're called to go into the cities to minister to them. Just like Elijah, he lived outside away from the city where Ahab was. He would go into the cities or into that city and take one person out to his property, to his refuge in the country. He never spent time in that city. And actually when he did go back to tell Ahab that bad things were gonna happen, God protected him and made the, all the soldiers not be able to see him. And then at that point, remember, he didn't even go back to his own house. God hid him in the wilderness. We need to take all of those lessons that we learn in God's word and apply them to our lives. So friends, study economics. Look at what's going on in the business sectors right now. Dig for those articles on, you know, all the tech sector layoffs or the auto loan defaults or things like that because they're in there. They're happening every day and they are snowballing. And you need to get yourself out of debt so that you are able to weather the storm of what's coming very soon. Okay, friends, now go check out this video right here, which talks about some very important survival items to have first on your homestead. Have a beautiful, blessed day. We'll talk to you next time.